Hello, Bill Kaladze here, back with part two of the Grand Prix Orlando prep, which is draft. So hopefully we can make it to day two and, and participate in some of these professional level drafts, and this will be some good practice here. We open a Mythic Gonti's Aetherheart. I tried this once. Uh, I had two in a sealed pool, and I don't recommend it. Uh, Hungry Flames is just the best card here. Uh, passing Shock, Passing Daring Demolition, and this is just a, a weak pack. A moment to talk about Dragster. This card's fine. I don't really know what deck it fits best into, but it's not a premium vehicle. I'd probably play the common 6-6 uh, six -six vehicle over it in most cases. It's just like, you either want to draw two cards, or you want to attack with a 4-4. Usually you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to, like, split and do a little bit of each. Uh, Renegade Map. Another weak pack here. Cogwork Assembler can be strong in the late game. Windkin Raiders might be the best card here besides Renegade Map, but I'm going to stay open. Blue-Red can, can have a strong artifact theme, but Renegade Maps are just, like you know, better lands. It's an upgrade to any land you could put in your deck. So, yeah, a lot of Birds of Paradise in this draft, a couple of Sahilis. We're passing to one of the Sahilis. Mr. Knife Face Jace. <laughs> and some other people now. Blue Mage taking their time out of everyone in this draft here. But that's all right, it'll give us some time to, to think about what we've passed. Hopefully the person two to our left opened a better pack than we did, yeah. So Pacification Array, I'd probably take that over Hungry Flames. So we pick up third pick, Iron Tread Crusher, that's the vehicle that that I like better than the 4-4. The four four. Anyway, there's some good green here. It's worth noting that we're being passed a green uncommon Narnum Renegade and a green common Scrounging Bandar, both premium green cards. In other formats, the Druid of the Cal would be better, but in this format, the 1 1 counter synergy, the size of the creature, and the revolt synergy with Scrounging Bandar are good enough that put it over the top. But yeah, happy to take Pacification Array. And this is a bit of a sign, Tezzeret's Touch coming third. It could be that people are in black or blue, but not both. Um, and it's enough to kind of put us into to black-blue. We already have two one-drops, which work decently with it. Requisitioner, not much else here, although it could be defensible to take the Aetherstream Leopard because we've been past a bit of green, and we can try to cut that off, but anyway. Tesserit's Touch it is. Paradox Engine. I can't really think of a use for this in Limited, so I'm not going to try. Uh, Dawn Feather Eagle. Might be the best card in this pack, but there's also Renegade Map and Sweatworks Brawler. God, this is a late eagle. <clears throat> Yeah, the Brawler, the Map, and the Dawn Feather Eagle. This is the hardest pick I think we've encountered so far. And I think it can't be the Eagle, but it could certainly be the Brawler or the Map. And yeah, strangely, I'm just going to take the Map here to stay somewhat open. Because I really do want to play this Tezzeret's Touch. And it could be that we end up in a Grixis deck here. Okay. Implement of Combustion and Welder Automaton. Both fine cards. And at this point... Yeah, at this point I'll just take the Welder Automaton. Because we don't have any creatures yet. Uh, it works well enough with Tezzeret's Touch. I wouldn't mind the Implement, because we could focus on taking 
improvised cards, but we don't have any yet, and I do want to get the first creature in here, and this one has some pretty good utility. Okay, Defiant Salvager. <laughs> Destructive Tampering for our one creature deck. Or, like, Foundry Assembler, and of these, I like Defiant Salvager. It puts us in the colors that that uh, have threaten effects, like Wrangle, and that's just such a beating. So we pick up another Salvager here, which might cement us into this kind of strategy. They also It also lets you sacrifice artifacts. So if we do pick up some, some puzzle knots or some uh, implements, that gets better. Not much else here. Gonti's Etherheart wheels, no surprise. This is when an artifact enters, you get some energy, and it's just a, a really expensive and conditional time walk that you can't reuse or anything. They've kind of closed all the loopholes. So, let's take Augmenting Automaton. Metallic Rebuke <laughs> might be best in this deck, uh, but Cruel Finality is uh, more consistent. Uh, same option here. I'm going to go for the Wrangle, though. Seeing this late with two Defiant Salvagers, uh, that could really... Yeah, that could really work out well for us. Sly Requisitioner. Well, of all the decks I've seen, this might be one of the better ones for the Requisitioner. Even so... Mm, you know, I'm actually going to take it here. Uh, the Aeronaut is um, a safer pick there, but I'm not about being safe. I mean, a little bit. But... <laughs> But especially if we get to steal our opponent's artifact, this card does get strong. Okay, another Tezzeret's Touch. Just on turn 3, having a pretty consistent 5-5 five, five attacker, we just leave our Renegade map there and attack with it and get it back if, if it dies. Pretty great. Um, blah, anything else? There's another Salvager. We don't need a million of this effect. Destructive Tampering is always good. And Invigorated, uh, Invigorated Rampage is a solid trick. So, yeah, but the upside of Tezzeret's Touch is just uh, insane. And here he is. Uh, not only, I mean, Tezzeret does it all. First of all, we're in blue-black, so I hope things go so well at the Pro Tour that we get past a Mythic in our colors. But it also helps fix... So that, that's just a slam dunk right here. Uh, passing Consulate Dreadnought, Aether Poisoner, Iron Tread Crusher, but yeah. Definitely, definitely taking Tezzeret. And some other good rares and uncommons. Fen Hauler is, is strong. That might be the pick here. It could be that or Implement of Malice. Both have their upside. Implement of Malice. Yeah, you know, I'm going to pick Fen Hauler because we don't have that many creatures. And this is a strong finisher. Just a one drop if we get enough little whatever's out. So, pretty heavy on the three drop slot now. I think everything is worth playing that we have so far. Still trying to get over this uh, <laughs> this core of a deck we have right now. Okay. A fairly weak pack overall. Hinterland Drake and Night Market Aeronaut. They're good. Siege Modification is is kind of a, an all-in thing. And there's Dark Intimations, which probably wheels. But I'm going to take it here. You can get back your Planeswalker. We, our fixing is already excellent with the two Renegade maps. And yeah, I mean, if this isn't the deck for Dark Intimations, then you'll never see a deck that <laughs> that's good for Dark Intimations. The thing is, this card's never... I mean, 
the upside of this card is ridiculous. It's like a four for one. But it's never going to be that bad. I mean, five mana is an overpriced edict. Get your opponent to sacrifice something. But at least you draw a card off it. Uh, and it can be much better than that. So if you have the mana to, to play it, it's, it's probably worth it. Uh, mechanized Productions. Can we just take all the mythics that <laughs> copy our stuff? I think we can. Just imagine having a million pacification arrays. You just can't lose, can you? Uh, that said, I'm willing to entertain that Windkin Raiders could be better in this deck, but I'm going to go for the Mechanized Productions. See? Doesn't even hurt us. We can pick... We get our pick of the improvised guys. So the options are Bastion Inventor and Windkin Raiders. I'm going to go for the Inventor. The mana might be hard, and the Hexproof is is pretty nuts, so I'll go for that. Another Wrangle and a Resourceful Return. Don't have a million artifacts, so I'm going to go for our second Wrangle here. Crackdown Construct, Rebuke, and not much else. Another Wrangle, but doesn't seem great. It'll happen often enough that we get to, to play an artifact on turn one that we can do a turn two Metallic Rebuke. And I don't love counterspells in this format, but it seems to fit. Another Defiant Salvager. Whew, okay. Sure. That actually has a lot of synergy with Tezzeret, because if the plus one is just like a Johnny's old plus one, which puts a 1-1 one -one counter on a creature, that's kind of what it's doing. You make your Ethereum cell, sacrifice it to Defiant Salvager, and that works well enough. Fen hauler here. We've got the ground tied up. And with three of these, the two wrangles become highly playable. Implement of Malice is back. Just another artifact to get down before turn three for Tezzeret's touch. And take into custody is just not playable. Leave in the dust versus Dispersal Tactician. I'll take Leave in the Dust. And this is already like a million cards to play. A million playables in this deck. You do have to adjust for Renegade maps counting as lands. And this is probably a 23 card deck. What do we have now? One thing to look at is how many Artificers do we have? So just one here, two. The Salvagers, they're also Artificers. So I think the Goggles is a solid first pick here. If we were in white, Skywhaler's shot, or even Restoration Gearsmith could be first pickable. It's also not the most embarrassing thing to enchant with mechanized production. Because just imagine having a million Goggles lying around. You just can't have too many. First pick Goggles. This, this card got a lot better with Aether Revolt. There's a lot more Artificers. A lot of good stuff. Pillar Bug, Aetherborn, and Foundry Screecher. Flying is a little hard to deal with. I could also see Pillar Bug becoming a 5 5 with Tezzeret's Touch. And Harsh Scrutiny is always fine. Hmm. Four good cards here. One thing to consider is we just don't have that many. I don't know, many slots left. We don't need we don't need anything. But I think given that ooh, it is it's still tough. I'll take the bat because flying is something we don't really have access to. Oh, we've done it. Marionette Master. We don't even need any more stuff, but Marionette Master fits perfectly into this deck. We've got so many artifacts to sacrifice that it also works well with Defiant Salvager. Wow, <laughs> gotta take it. Definitely identified the right place to be. Here, Midnight Oil is interesting. We do have some good cards to like draw into, but Glint Nest Crane is a nice size and finds artifacts, so that's what I like here. Yeesh, at some point we're gonna have to cut cut cards. 
probably at this point we're cutting at least one wrangle. It works so well with the salvagers though. Hmm. Leaving the dust, we can leave that out. Gorger's no good. Puzzle Knot is at least a good sideboard card. Syndicate Trafficker? Yeah. Look, if our opponent is playing artifact creatures, we're just going to win with our wrangles. Yeah, this has got to be it. I'll take the Trafficker. Die Young. Cut the Screecher, cut one Fen Hauler. And then what? Because I do kind of like 17 lands in this deck, especially since we're playing two Renegade maps, so that'll bring it down to 15. I don't want to go down to 14 lands. Uh, Dunned Operative is great. I could even see cutting like Wrangle and Hungry Flames, but we could easily support them in this deck. Mind Rot. Scavenger? I like Scavenger. So maybe we cut one of our Salvagers. They're not much better in multiples. Harsh Scrutiny versus... Uh, yeah, I'll take Harsh Scrutiny. Maybe, maybe it gets good. Um, yeah, I'm also considering putting this Wrangle back in. Problem with Requisitioner is it has to be a non-token artifact. Uh, here's another tough question. I'll go for the Puzzle Knot, makes our draws more consistent, and it's not a bad thing to copy with the production. Draw card, lose a life every turn. Yeah, I'm almost thinking we can cut the Automaton. Maybe... Ah, maybe we leave that in, though. This is getting, getting weird. I actually like cutting Sly Requisitioner. It's not going to do enough. It's not going to do as much as other things. Mechanized Production, Intimation, uh, Tezzeret. If we cut red altogether, that's, that's an option. Since our deck looks good enough, hijack just to... <laughs> just to get the rest wrangled in here. We could also kind of cut blue and splash blue, <clears throat> but having a turn three Tezzeret's Touch more often than not is going to win a lot of games. So now that we have a strong pool, the tough part is going to be going down to the minimum number of cards So how important is Fen Hauler to the deck? How important is mechanized production? What does it really do? Do we have a lot of ways of making servos? If not, maybe the production gets worse. Maybe it's just not good in this deck. It can make implements, it can make goggles, but yeah, if it's not necessary to win and it's not always good, then maybe, maybe it deserves a cut. Whereas, like, the Wrangles work so well with what we have. Did we cut a Defiant Salvager? I think we bring that back in. But maybe not. Jeez, I mean, three, three's plenty. Automaton's neat with the touch because you can still pump it. Twenty-four is just two many cards, I think. Cruel Finality. Combo that with Wrangle. Steal their thing. Make it smaller and then steal it. Yeah, I want to keep both Wrangles in. Hijack might be too hard to cast. Although it does work well as well. So, what's the cut? That's the question here. 
Yeah, I guess since we do have Syndicate Trafficker, that makes it a little easier to cut a Salvager. But I'd rather... I'd almost rather cut Hungry Flames. All the artifacts are good. These cards get a lot cheaper because of having early artifacts. Maybe it's uh, Implement of Examination, but again, that's just so good some of the time. And Fortuitous Find is good in a later game scenario. Alright, I'll, I'll go for this. I'm going to cut a... Uh, I really don't like that. You know, I'm going to cut Implement of Examination. It's just our most expensive thing, and it'll probably work well enough without it. So, 8... All right, so 12, 7, 4. It's saying we want less blue. I think 8, 5, 4 makes sense here. And we'll have to cut a couple of these. So we can cut uh, black and red for the Renegade maps. And that gives us pretty consistently uh, 7 blue, 9 black, and 5 red. <laughs> so yeah, that, sh that should be plenty. The wrangles are kind of later game cards, because that's really to steal the creature and then sacrifice it. Okay. Let's see if this works as well as, uh, as planned. Oh no. We're playing the best limited master in the entire world. This is Gainsay. Ah, uh, I'm scared. All right, let's try to impress him. He always has a good deck. God, this guy's ridiculous. I wonder if he'll be at Orlando. Maybe he will. Sky Skiff, yep, unbeatable. Well, we can tap that dude. They play a creature. Yeah, just no ands, ifs, or buts about it. Interesting. Uh, what do we do here? Well, let's just touch it up. <clears throat> yeah, this is none other than Andrew Cuneo, pro player. And I'm ridiculously scared of them. Yeah, look at this. They just had it. Just way more scared than I ought to be. Well, maybe our combos will be good enough to stop them, but I'm not too hopeful about that. No, they're doing it too. They're playing the Glint Nest Crane. See if they find anything. Nope, they, they whiff on that, so even ridiculous pros are susceptible to variants. But we get attacked for six here. It's a little scary. Oh no, they're just uh, coming in for a little bit. So they might want the energy later, they're thinking. All right, well, we've got some potential here. So we steal the wolf. Yeah, let's steal the wolf. Sack the wolf. Make our pacification array big again. And <laughs> attack for eight. Whew. They bounce our pacification array again, most likely. I'm sure they have it. Uh, Dark Intimations is going to be great next turn. Whew, I'm getting excited. This might actually be possible. Okay. We don't have a creature in our graveyard, <clears throat> so intimations gets worse, but all is not lost. We can attack, can't block artifact creatures. They could double block pacification array. We could attack with the salvager and then get it back. Yeah, let's just do that. Okay, maybe they chump here, 
or maybe they're going in for the double block. What a, ooh, triple block, my goodness. Well, I'm not so scared of flyers, but I am kind of scared of this 3-3. Three, three. So let's trade off here. Let's cast Dark Intimations. That'll discard their last card. They'll have to sack Glint Nest Crane, or maybe even Sky Skiff. Phew. Well, we took a game. We took a game. We've got a... Whoops, what the heck? We, that warning. That warning is just out of control. Uh, yeah, our deck's absurd. They do have bounce effects, which, which make Tezzeret's touch worse. Uh, hmm. You see Goggles, Augmenting Automaton. The other thought would be to, like, switch into less blue and play more red for Hijack. But I actually like how that worked. I think we can run it back just like this. All of their creatures were small enough to steal with Wrangle. So if, if they get some artifact creature, we'll get to steal it and kill it with the Trafficker. The Tezzeret's Touch doesn't do much in this hand, but there's some upside. Okay, nothing from them yet. A pretty weak Syndicate Trafficker without any anything else to do. Come on, ooh, well, all right. <laughs> Perfect mana, but not much to do with it. Ether Herder. Well, we could wrangle it, but we don't have any energy or any way to use that. So really, it's just getting in some extra damage. I think we have to hold off. Actually, I don't mind trading with it. Sure. Or just getting in some more damage because that damage is going to build up. They have a servo. Now we can steal the servo, which gives our guy a 1 1 counter and might get in an extra damage. Riparian Tiger. Uh, okay. Okay. Tezzeret the Schemer. We could attack for 8 here, and give Syndicate Trafficker a 1-1 counter by using both Wrangles. Or we could cast Tezzeret and make a... <laughs> and make a... an Ethereum thing, which could uh, get touched next turn. Ah, I just don't know what to do here. Uh, let's see, attacking for 8 puts them at 6. That's pretty low. Being at 6 is pretty low. They attack back for 9 and put us at 8. Yeah, we just don't have much else to do. Now they know to look out for all of our millions of wrangles. So that puts our guy up to a 4-4. It's got to be somewhat scary for them. Tezzeret didn't do much there. Like, Tezzeret just dies to them attacking. Oh, they're going to have a blocker? <laughs> I'm actually glad to see this, because we actually have a pretty good late game. Okay. Servo. So what we do here is Tezzeret make a thing which we can sacrifice to the trafficker to try to protect, and they're just going to get a ton of value from, from their spy here.
I think we'll give it a turn. We could have attacked there, but they don't have to block 679, 10, 11, 12. That's a pretty good play. So we'll sack this better than if we tried to do it next turn and uh, Tezzeret's touch got um, <laughs> got removed by the natural obsolescence. <clears throat> so I think they come after Tezzeret here and we might just have to let it go. They don't have the extra energy, so we could trade our trafficker with the Riparian Tiger and then keep Tezzeret around to make to make a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, I think we do this. So Tezzeret goes down to 2. But that, that was a lot of value out of the Trafficker, I think. Not so much with the Wrangle that couldn't steal the Herder. Oh god, Lifecraft Cavalry? Gross. Well, hopefully they don't have another way to deal with Tezzeret's touch. Because that's about <laughs> as best we can do right now. We need to draw Dark Intimations or... Oh, say it isn't so. They're... See how good they are? They sideboarded into like the perfect answers for what we have. Eleven... They might ignore us. No, they're killing... Tezzeret, and doing a ton to us. Another Leopard, and we draw lots of land. Okay. Um, Harsh Scrutiny looks good. We can't justify mechanized production. They have too much removal for our artifacts. <clears throat> the touches are good, but... Again, they weren't great in this situation. I think it's worth <clears throat> siding them out and putting in hijack and kind of redoing our mana a little bit. Adding two mountains, 15, 16, 17. And Screecher, is that going to be good here? The Rebuke might still be okay. Three, four, five, that gives us a few blue sources. Screecher dies to that 1-3 flyer that we know they have. Another Fen Hauler could be could be something. But yeah, I'm gonna focus on the Defiant Salvagers this game and try to get all our hijack value. All right, good luck. Be on the play, and ooh, a good starting hand. Really great. I think turn one, it's going to be Pacification Array, and then turn two, it gives them a little more chance to draw something better. I mean, if they play their best card turn one, then whatever. Uh, all right, Harsh Scrutiny, Gira Per Guide. Like, if they just drew this, I mean, that's our only chance. Their obsolescence is great against our pacification array. I'm just going to take a quick screenshot here to keep track of how many lands they have. So take the guide and yeah, Hungry Flames is gas, so we'll take that too. Um, Tomaton coming down. So they play out one of their three forests in their sky skiff. We knew about that. I think we go ahead and attack here for one, in case they do get the creature off the top. So they don't have much to do. And they're not going to worry about our pacification array until they have nothing much else to do. Here we can just go for the Screecher. And yeah, I guess they could take out... Ooh, their own glint nest crane. So they revealed all these things. And do they miss? Yeah, they miss again. Unfortunate for them. Could be the difference between winning and losing this. <clears throat> Alright, so what do we have? 
We've got hungry flames for the crane. <clears throat> they crew that, which is fine. We can tap it. Get in our four damage here. And <laughs> none of our steal and eat cards are applicable right now. Uh, yeah, they're just going to wait till we pump up the automaton all the way and then use natural obsolescence. So I'm going to keep back. I'm going to keep back one. Yeah, they'll just use it now. That's fair enough. So they are out of that. They keep drawing lands. And we don't know what the three cards in their hand. We don't know what those are. You can tap that for for whatever. Tezzeret. Excellent draw here. To play around some weird counter magic, I'll play out the land first. Hard counters still work, but we have three up to pay for whatever. Insidious will. Okay. <clears throat> Leave it to Gainsay to counter a blue spell. Yep, and they'll make our thing smaller. Alright, well, they've dealt with everything we have. Fenhaller, hardcast. Whoops, shoot. Oh, yeah, because it has improvise, it makes you, makes you click on each individual mana. Unless you click it first and then cast mana. Can't attack into the Sky Skiff there. They can easily crew it. Hopefully they have nothing for this Fen Hauler, because that's our last bit of gas. You're at two. <laughs> Shock off the top? No, we don't even have it in the deck. Oh, we got there! We beat the un we did the impossible, and I think part of it... Well, they still got all the value out of their obsolescences. So it's not like we really got them. <laughs> but... Oh, anyway. See you in the next match. Hello, welcome back. This is round two of our GP Orlando prep draft format. Uh, and keeping this. <clears throat> our hard match is over with, but <laughs> I guess we could still lose it before the finals here. Solid hand. I think it goes Glintness Crane first, just to get a creature down. Oh, they're doing the same thing. Everyone we've encountered has Glint Nest Crane. And they actually find something with it. So yeah, we can knock cranes against each other. Hopefully we get something. Yeah, Renegade Map is perfect. Um, yep. Back up to seven. And they could just cast the Sky Gate, so... Oh, Cogwork Assembler. It's a little bit scary. Not really sure what to do here. Uh, Puzzle Knot doesn't leave up Rebuke. We could do that in the Renegade map, or we could do Define Salvager. Salvager, let, let's get that into play. Skygate to stop us attacking for the rest of the game. Wrangle would be good. Implement of Malice? Pretty good. I think we start with a puzzle knot and a couple renegade maps. Might as well get those out there. And would I rather have a land out of the deck or a 1 1 counter on this? I think I'd rather have the lands out of the deck, so yeah, let's just let's just uh, play the slow game. Or I might just leave them for um, in, uh, improvise. To be quite honest, release the gremlins. You gotta be kidding with that! Can't believe they released the gremlins on our maps. They just ate those maps up. Wish we had the rebuke up for that, but that was for next turn. 
Um, okay. Well, if that's how they want to play, that's how we'll play. Get them to discard here. We played our land, so... Uh, pass once again. Not very good blockers. They're going to leave up three. Nope, it's something bigger. Improvise for five? The giant. Yeah, let's counter this. I don't want to deal with that giant right now. And that's a good catch. That's not a bad catch there. All right, well, we can block one of the gremlins easily. We're only taking two. Don't need our upkeep stop on anymore. Just slows us down. Try to draw something that isn't a land. I mean, goodness knows. Uh, this is why we wanted to use those renegade maps. Ten, seven. Yeah, we didn't even use them. Twelve. That's like having twelve out of our seventeen lands. Stupid gremlins. Stupid release the gremlins. It's really a four for one. Five mana, four for one. Can't believe these draws. Yeah. <clears throat> we have four lands in hand. Eleven, so four lands left in the deck. That's all right. We don't need that island. We've got plenty more. Oh, this is just absurd. I mean, at this point, like, what can we do? Just got the block. Hey, a little late. All right. I think the idea of the deck is fine. Maybe scrutiny helps. God, release the gremlins, though. At least release the gremlins kind of doesn't deal with Tesseret's touch because we'll we'll still keep the thing. Failed inspection. We've got that counter spell that we can use. Oh man. Alright, I'm gonna submit like this. You might be tempted to take a land out if that happens, but yeah, our land base is fine. We have a few ways of drawing extra cards and thinning. So as long as we can get those to work. Yeah, let's play first. Terrible hand. Really needs blue, but I can't justify mulliganing this on the play. Release the gremlins. Yeah, getting stuck with these and no artifacts really hurts. And we have to draw artifact and blue to make it work. And then we need to draw land, we need to draw black, like way too much has to go right here. It's not, not the strongest opening that our deck can have. A good start would be to draw the Renegade map. I mean, even that's not amazing. Wrangle might be good, depending on what they what they get, but we really want to just um, prolong this game. Wow, Fireforger's Puzzle Knot. That's pretty good. That's pretty good there. They're just going to two-for-one us with every play now. Oh, come on. <clears throat> Not like this. Yeah, I mean, we drafted a powerful deck. It's unclear that we built it correctly. But a little closer to um, Marionette Master now, I guess. That's the next thing we'll cast. Just draw a red, black, master. But here comes a giant threat. 
that we won't deal with in time. <clears throat> there are outs. I mean, if we draw if we draw a defiant salvager, then we could make a comeback. Stranger things have happened. Black here, yeah. Taking six down to ten. This might have been a mulligan. I didn't think about it too long. Eight, ten. And they've got four points of burn with the um, Gear Smasher. What a beating. What an outright beating. So we have seven sources of that. A real shame, too, because the, um, the first <laughs> match was so good that it comes down to this. Well, would draft again. Uh, might have to go back and look at whether this deck was built correctly, because it seems that, you know, we drew three, six, 14 cards, and we just can't do anything. So it's definitely possible that the deck was a little too greedy on its mana base. And one of the options, I liked what we did against uh, Andrew Cuneo Gainsay in the last one, where we took out the blue. Maybe not the Tezzeret's touches, although those were good to take out against the bounce and um, the tuck for the artifacts. But put in put in our hijack and and some more red sources to make it more consistent. And that was probably a better way of building it, despite how much I like Glint Nest Crane. And, you know, the Tezzeret and the touches can be the splash and have red be the secondary color. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll post this for the, the GP prep, and you can check it out.